So let's finish up this semester of differential equations and discuss some more Laplace transforms. Um, yeah, some more Laplace transforms. All right, so our first theorem is the first translation theorem. So if the Laplace transform of a function is equal to another one in uh, another function in terms of s and a is any real number, then the Laplace transform of e to the at times some function in terms of t computes as a function f um, of s minus a. So what on earth does that mean and how do we apply this? So let's take a look at some examples in order to see how this works. So, there we go. All right, so if we're using this first translation theorem, let's evaluate the Laplace of e to the 5t um, times t cubed. Get my I pen working. Here we go. All right, so according to the theorem, we are going to find the Laplace transform of t cubed and evaluate it um, as s goes to s minus a. And in this case, a is the 5 here, so we will replace a with 5. So if we look back at our tables that we've used previously in solving Laplace transform, we will see that the formula for t cubed is the exponent factorial, so 3 factorial, over s to what's in the exponent plus 1. Okay, and you can look back at the previous PowerPoints if that doesn't sound familiar. And again, we're evaluating this from s to s minus 5. Um, essentially, what we're saying is we're replacing the s with s minus 5. So this gives us a final answer of 3 factorial over s minus 5 to the fourth power. Okay, so when you have a function in terms of t being multiplied by e to a constant times t, this is a much shorter way to solve this problem since this is a product of functions. Um, so this is a way to solve this type of combination. So let's try another one. As you see, there's another example up here. So we have evaluate the Laplace transform of the e to the negative 2t times cosine of 4t. Let me move this stuff out of the way. So again, we have the exponential function raised to a constant negative 2 times t. So we know that we will be evaluating um, the s as s minus a negative 2, or s plus 2. So now what we really want to look at is we want to look at the Laplace transform of the other function, which is cosine of 4t. And if we look back at, let's see, s minus a negative 2. If we look back at the table from previous sections, we'll see that the outcome of a Laplace of a cosine function is s over s squared plus the constant inside of the cosine function in front of t squared. And again, we're still going to be evaluating this where the s's become s plus 2. So then we just go back in and we replace all the s's with s plus 2. So we have s plus 2 over s plus 2 squared plus 16 is our outcome. For the next example, let's use what we just learned to solve an initial value problem. And this is going to be much longer, so let me switch over to our whiteboard to give us some more room. Okay, so we're solving the initial value problem y double prime minus 6y prime plus 9y is equal to t squared e to the 3t, where the initial values 
given our y at zero is equal to two and the first derivative at zero is equal to 17. So our first step is to practice what we did last class. So we have the Laplace of the second derivative minus six times the Laplace of the first derivative plus nine times the Laplace of y is equal to Laplace of t squared e to the three t. Okay, remember that Laplace is treated like integrals where you can take constants out and just multiply them after the fact. So recall that the second derivative is s squared, capital Y function in terms of s, minus s initial value at Y, minus initial value of the first derivative. Okay, that's all this second derivative part. Now we have minus six, moving on to the next term. Okay, this first derivative comes here. So this is the second derivative. This is the first derivative, uh, Laplace. So we have s y of s minus y zero plus nine times y of s is equal to the what we just learned today, the Laplace transform of t squared evaluated where s will turn into, um, and since our constant is three, s minus three. Okay, so notice what happens with these formulas. We have s squared in front, initial value, initial value for the second derivative. Just s in front and initial value, no s in front of that initial value. Notice s squared, s nothing, s nothing, and then just y of s. So hopefully you're seeing the pattern as the derivatives decrease and what happens to the y of s equation. So now we go to the next line to keep solving. And we are going to put all of, let's see, let's make our substitutions. So we have s squared y of s minus s times the initial value at zero, which is two, minus the initial value of derivative, which is 17, minus six s y of s plus six times the initial value, um, and it's plus because we have a negative here and a negative here, and the initial value at y is two, plus nine times y of s is equal to the Laplace transform of t squared is two factorial over s to the two plus one, and we still need to evaluate it where the s's become s minus threes. Okay, so now in the next line, we are going to group all the ys terms together. Okay, I'm gonna to need to clear this out. So if we group all the ys terms together, a coefficient was s squared minus six s plus nine. Those were the three terms with a y of s. And so I just put their coefficients grouped together in the beginning. Um, minus 2s minus 17 plus 12 is equal to 2 over s minus 3 to the third power. Okay, because 2 factorial is 2 times 1, which is just 2. That's why I dropped the factorial part in the numerator. All right, beginning to solve for y of s. We can uh, combine these together to get negative five and add it to the other side, along with also adding this negative two s. So we'll have s squared minus six s plus nine as the coefficient of y of s. And we'll have this two over s minus three cubed plus five plus two s. 
Then we need to divide by this s squared minus 6s plus 9. So we get y of s is equal to 2 over s minus 3 cubed. And also in this denominator now is what we divided by. Plus 2s plus 5. I'm going to keep that together and divide those two terms as a whole with this denominator. You could do it separately if you want, but you'll see why I'm putting it together in a moment. So when I look at, um, let's see. Oh, interesting. Uh, so if we factor the s squared minus 6s plus 9, if you think of two numbers that multiply to 9 and add to 6, we have 3 and 3. And since we need to add to a negative 6, we need it to be negative 3 and negative 3. So this factors 2s minus 3 squared. Okay, so that means this denominator is s minus 3 squared. So this actually gives us y of s is equal to 2 over s minus 3 to the fifth power, because when you are multiplying same bases, you add the exponents. And this second part is going to be s minus 3 squared. So because this first term has a constant, uh, has a constant numerator, it's already good to go, but this one has an S component and our numerator, so we need to use partial fractions for it. Okay, so let's do partial fractions. So we have 2S plus 5 over S minus 3 squared. Okay, we're going to break this up. If you recall from Calc 2, that there is a shortcut when you have a binomial squared in the denominator for partial fractions. So you have a over s minus 3 plus b over s minus 3 squared. So notice the shortcut is, is that we do have a quadratic in the denominator where the second fraction where b is the numerator. And Typically, you have to have one less, so it would be bx plus c. But if you split the denominator as such, then you can keep two constant numerators, making your math a bit easier. And again, if you want to know why that is, then you just have to look up, if you Google it and look up to derive why these partial fractions are equivalent, you can find a fairly step-by-step um, -step proof online. Um, if you can't find it, let me know. I've definitely looked it up before. but um, I have no interest in deriving it um, here in the lesson, but taking my word for it and taking whoever your Calc 2 professor was, uh, these are equivalent setups for the partial fractions. So recall what we do is we multiply the, all the numerators by the common denominator, which is s minus 3 squared. So we are left with 2s plus 5 is equal to a times s minus 3, because one of the s minus 3s got canceled with the denominator, and s minus 3 squared cancels with s minus 3 squared, just leaving us with b. Now what we want to do is distribute this a, so we have 2s plus 5 is equal to a s minus 3a. Actually, I should write this consistently, so let's put the s in front, plus b. And we then put together the S terms. Oh, no, I had it right. Let's put the S second. Okay, so we have the only S term is this A, and here's the other term. So we have negative 3A plus B as our constant. And we pair up the coefficients accordingly. So AS needs to be equal to 2S. So we have 2 is equal to a. Done. Negative 3a plus b are all constants, and they need to be equivalent to 5. And we already know a is 2. 
So we solve for b, so we get negative 6 plus b is equal to 5. We add 6 to both sides, and we get b is equal to 11. Okay, so what we've just discovered with partial fractions is that 2s plus 5 over s minus 3 squared is equivalent to 2 over s minus 3 plus 11 over s minus 3 squared. So our y of s function is 2 over s minus 3 plus 11 over s minus 3 squared plus 2 over s minus 3 to the fifth. That was that other term that we had uh, in the problem prior to looking at splitting up the second term with partial fractions. Now, why all this work? Because again, we're always trying to format the problem in order to fit the Laplace transforms in our tables that we have. So we are trying to solve this differential equation using Laplace transforms. So if we do the Laplace inverse of y of s, we get 2 Laplace inverse of 1 over s minus 3. Notice I took the constant 2 out. Plus 11 Laplace inverse of 1 over s minus 3 squared. Plus 2 times the Laplace inverse of 1 over s minus 3 to the fifth power. Okay, so this gives us 2 times the plus inverse of 0 factorial s to the 0 plus 1 evaluated where s is going to be s minus 3 plus 11 times the Laplace inverse of 1 factorial over s to the 1 plus 1 evaluated from uh, where s is going to be s minus 3, plus 2 times the plus inverse of, and here we have, we have s to the 4 plus 5 in the denominator, but our numerator needs to be 4 factorial in order to fit the format of the, uh, the table. So remember that if I have to put in something that's not there, right now it's just a 1. So because I need it to be a 4 factorial, I need to account for that on the outside. So 1 over 4 factorial gets placed in on the outside. Very similar to how you did it with integrals. You always put the reciprocal on the outside to balance the equation. So you're technically multiplying by 1. All right, finishing this problem up. We get 2 e to the 3t times 1 plus, because we're taking the inverse. So if you're finding, if you're wondering where these are from, I'm, I still had to take the inverse Laplace of these formats. So if you look at the format of 0 factorial over s to the 0 plus 1, that would be, um, and since s is actually s minus 3, that is 2, which was already in front e to the 3t times 1 plus 11 e to the 3t times t plus 2 over 4 factorial. That was that 1 over 4 factorial times 2 that was already there times e to the 3t times t to the 4th. So altogether, our solution to the initial value problem is 2e to the 3t plus 11t e to the 3t plus 1 twelfth t. That's a 12, although that kind of looks like a 1 squared. That's better. To the 4th e to the 3t. And that's our solution to the differential equation using Laplace transforms. Now, another theorem that we can, let's look at it. 
is the derivatives of transforms. So if f of s is equal to the Laplace of a function in terms of t, and n is some whole number, one, two, three, and so on, then the Laplace of t to the n, f of t, is equal to negative one raised to the n, the nth derivative of s. Let's take a look at how this would apply to some examples. So our first example will be to evaluate the Laplace of t times sine bt. And I think we'll have enough room on the slide to solve this one. So let's just keep this right on the slide. Okay, so we recognize that f of t is the function sine of bt. So the function in terms of s is Laplace transform of this function in terms of t, which will come out to be b over s squared plus b squared from our table. All right, the first derivative of the t function, n is equal to one. So we have the, or I should say the exponent, that's not a prime, sorry, the exponent on the t function is a one, so our n should be noted as a one. So if we are to take the Laplace of t times sine of bt, we are going to get, according to the derivative theorem, we are going to get negative 1 raised to the n, which is a 1, f to the first power of s, which is the first derivative. So we have d over ds. And that negative one in front, so we'll just put that negative there, of b over s squared plus b squared. So the negative derivative in terms of s, okay, we would, instead of using the quotient rule, I'm going to bring this denominator up with a negative one exponent. So using my laws of exponent, because I find the uh, product rule to be easier to use. <laughs> so if we use our, actually b is a constant, so we don't need the product rule. This is going to be just a straight chain rule, making it even easier. So we have that negative up in front. If we bring the exponent down, we get negative b times s squared plus b squared. Subtract one from the exponent gives us negative two. Then we multiply by the derivative of what's inside. You can tell right here which one's the variable and which one's the constant. The s is the variable because we are taking the derivative in terms of that variable, making b our constant. So b squared, the derivative of that is just zero and the derivative of s squared is two s. So our final answer, which I'm gonna put up in this top corner, I'll put it in red since it's not directly below we get 2bs over s squared plus b squared squared. Okay, where b is a constant and s is our variable. Let's try solving an initial value problem with this new information that we learned. I'm gonna switch to uh, my whiteboard, give myself some more room. So we are solving x double prime plus 16x is equal to cosine of 4t, where the initial value for x is zero and the initial value at the first derivative is one. So we take the Laplace of the second derivative plus pull the constant out, 16 times the Laplace of x is equal to the Laplace of 
cosine 4t. So we get s squared x of s minus s x naught of uh, x of zero minus x prime of zero plus 16 x of s is equal to, and again from the chart we pull the formula for cosine and we get s over s squared plus four squared. So now on the left side, we're gonna wanna do some organizing. We wanna replace all of the initial values with uh, values that they have. Um, so we have, I'm gonna put my two x of s's together. So I have s squared plus 16 for the x of s terms. Then I have minus s times the initial value x of zero, which is zero. So that's not s of zero, that's s times zero, which is gonna be zero. And I have minus the initial value of the first derivative, which is one, still equal to s over s squared plus 16. So now I'm gonna start solving. So this is zero. So if I add one to the other side, this s squared plus 16 times x of s is still on the left side. And I have s over s squared plus 16 plus one. Divide by s squared plus 16. So x of s is equal to s over s squared plus 16 squared, because there's two of these denominators, plus one over s squared plus 16. So we don't need any partial fractions in this one. We can now directly move into the inverse functions of the Laplace. So we get x of t, little x of t, the solution to the differential equation, we take the inverse Laplace of, uh, let's see, of our s over s squared plus four squared squared. I just rewrote that 16 to be in the format. Now we need, We need a value here. We need the four. So this four is needed in this numerator and we also need a two. So if I put, and the two is from this, so we have two times four is needed in this numerator. Let me actually do this in a different color. So we need the two and the four to fit the formulas. And that's eight that we're putting into the formula in order to make the formula work. So recall, make sure you put that reciprocal on the outside to balance. Plus the, oh, let's close the Laplace, there we go. Plus the inverse Laplace of one over S squared plus four squared. Again, this four we need in the numerator. So if we put this four into the numerator, we need to put one fourth on the outside to balance, giving us our solution to the differential equation being one eighth t sine of four t plus one fourth sine of four t as our final answer. Let's take a look at another chart. Again, whenever we're looking at charts, we should really save these slides. So this is slide number eight. So we can see what the Laplace transform uh, formula looks like for each one of these versions. And let's do two more examples. So these are gonna be long ones. So I'm just gonna use our whiteboard for these. For the first example, we will 
solve an initial value problem, more practice with that. It's our whole purpose of learning these Laplace transforms in order to solve some of these differential equations differently. Okay, so we're solving the differential equation y double prime plus 2y prime plus y is equal to 0. Initial value um, at 0 is equal to 3, and the initial value of the first derivative at 0 is equal to 0. So we get the Laplace transform of the second derivative plus 2 times the Laplace of the first plus the Laplace of y is equal to the Laplace of 0, the constant on the other side. So we get s squared y of s plus s y of 0 plus the initial value at the first derivative plus 2 times for the first derivative, we get s y of s plus the initial value plus y of s is equal to zero. The Laplace of zero is just zero. So we're going to want to distribute this two into the parentheses. So we get s squared times y of s plus s times the initial value at zero, which is three plus the initial value of the first derivative, which is 0, plus 2sy of s, plus 2 times the initial value of 0, which is 3, plus y of s is equal to, let's see if I can squish it in here, 0. <laughs> OK, so let's put all of the y of s terms together. So let me highlight those. That's this one this one and this one and we put their coefficients together so we have s squared plus 2s plus 1 they're all in front of the ys term um not equals we have plus 3 times s plus 0 plus 6 is equal to 0 so let's move these two things onto the other side. So we have s squared plus 2s plus 1 as the coefficient of the y of s function. And we have negative 3s minus 6. And then we divide. We get negative 3s minus 6 over s squared plus 2s plus 1. Okay, and if we simplify, we can factor that denominator. And the denominator factors to s plus 1 squared. So hopefully you're recognizing this as a partial fractions case. So we know we need to move to partial fractions. So we have negative 3s minus 6 over s plus 1 squared. We're going to use that same trick we did on the previous example so that we can keep our, co our uh, numerators constant instead of having several terms. We'll split up this binomial into two pieces. Multiply by the common denominator, which in this case is s plus 1 squared. So we get negative 3s minus 6 is equal to a times s plus 1 because one of the s plus 1s canceled with the denominator plus b. So we have a s plus a plus b on the right side, where a and b are the constants, and they need to match up with the coefficients on the left side. So the coefficient of s need to be equivalent, so a is equal to negative 3, and the constant is equal to negative 6, so a plus b needs to be equal to negative 6. We already know a, so we can solve for b. And we get b is also equal to negative 3. So what we found is that the partial fraction negative 3s minus 6 over s plus 1 squared is equivalent to negative 3 over s plus 1 plus negative 3 over s plus 1 squared. Now let's apply the Laplace inverse 
in order to solve the differential equation. So the solution to the differential equation can be found by negative three Laplace inverse of one over S plus one minus three Laplace inverse of one over S plus one squared. Okay, so we have negative three, still haven't done the Laplace inverse, but this is gonna be one over S where we'll apply the S to S plus one, minus three times the Laplace inverse of one factorial over S squared, where we'll apply S being replaced with S plus one. So we get negative three times one e to the negative t minus three times t e to the negative t. And so our solution to the differential equations is negative three e to the negative t minus three t e to the negative t. Again, where you go from the negative Laplace inverse to the e to the t function is all found from the table based on fitting the formula to, um, to, the, to, the, to the formulas in the table. I don't know why that was so hard to get out. <laughs> Let's try one more initial value problem. So in this example, we're working with y double prime plus 4y prime plus 8y is equal to zero, where the initial value of y at zero is equal to zero, and the initial value at the first derivative is equal to two. So we have Laplace transform of the second derivative plus four times the Laplace of the first derivative plus eight times the Laplace of y is equal to the Laplace of zero, which we know is just zero. So we have s squared, y of s, minus s, uh, minus s initial value at zero, minus the first derivative at zero, plus four times s y of s minus the initial value at zero plus eight times y of s is equal to zero because the Laplace transform of zero is zero. Okay, so we have s squared y of s minus s times the initial value, which is zero. This is a times minus the first derivative at zero, which is two plus four s y of s minus four times the initial value at zero, which is zero, plus eight y of s is equal to zero. Again, I highlight all of my y of s terms to combine them together. So I have s squared plus four s plus eight. Those are all my y of s terms. This is zero, this is zero, so I have negative two and a positive eight left, so that gives me plus six equals zero. So my y of s is equal to a negative six over s squared plus four s plus eight. And I try to factor this, but two numbers that multiply to eight do not add to four, there is no combination where that happens since everything is positive, and therefore this is not factorable. So this is one of the first examples where we're not able to factor the denominator, and we will have to resort to something probably much farther in your memory, which is completing the square. So bring back your skills from, shoot, either college algebra, intermediate algebra, pre-calc, some point you should have learned completing the square. If not, Khan Academy is a great resource to look this up. 
So we have s squared plus 4s plus 8 is equal to 0. First part in completing the square is to move the constant onto the other side. So we have s squared plus 4s is equal to negative 8. Find what value completes the square on the left side, and that is the middle term. It's b divided by 2 squared, which if you're thinking about a quadratic, the coefficients are a, b, and c in order of s squared s constant. So we're taking the coefficient of the middle term, which is 4, divided by 2, which gives us 2, and squaring it brings us back to 4. You take that special value and you add it to both sides of the equation. So we get s squared plus 4s plus 4 is equal to negative 4. The purpose of doing that is because you have now very strategically made a perfect square on the left side. This is going to be s plus 2 squared is what it factors to. And we can bring this back over. So plus 4 is equal to 0. That's a 0. So now my y of s function can be rewritten as 2 over s plus 2 squared plus 4. And therefore, I am going to rewrite that denominator as 2 over s minus a negative 2 squared plus 4. Oh, no, plus excuse me, plus 2 squared. Now, if you look at that table, the reason why I did this is because that fits a formula in the table as long as um, we have this format. So if you look at the format, there's a subtraction. So that's why I manipulated the plus 2. So we have our, we are now onto the, Laplace inverse, so we are ready to solve our initial value problem. So we're going to apply the inverse to 2 over s minus a negative 2 squared plus 2 squared, which comes out to be e, again you're looking in the table to find these functions, e to the negative 2t sine of 2 t. And that's our final result. Um, I probably should mention, I skipped a step. Uh, so how did this get to here? Well, essentially what I did was I should have rewrote this for you guys. I apologize. 2 over. Now we're doing s squared plus 2 squared. And we're evaluating it from s to s minus a negative 2, hence the rewriting, so that I could put that in after the fact. So that's where um, these numbers came from and how I manipulated it to get to the final answer. And that concludes our course in differential equations for this semester.